Step inside, file in promptly because I need to tell you about this new thing that I started doing six-ish weeks ago in my business and it makes me $2,144 a month and it only requires one hour a week of my time. I've also never talked about this before because I'd never done it before. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to create your own paid newsletter. If that's something that you're interested in doing, paid newsletter, paid subscription. Think Substack, but not Substack. I talk to you about copywriting in your email newsletter, emails in general all the time. I'm a copywriter, it comes with the territory. But I'm not talking about sales copy in this video. I wanna to talk to you about showing up in your subscriber's inbox weekly and getting paid for it and taking it a step beyond just your regular newsletter. Hold on to your socks, it's a good one. Also, yes, I'll clear the air and let you know that if you look closely, my dress does have vegetables on it. I purchased it without knowing that, but I think it's giving Miss Frizzle, so I'm okay with it. If we've not met, hey, I'm Ashlyn Carter. I'm a conversion copywriter and brand and launch strategist. I love, love not gatekeeping on the agency side of my business or my business. This video is kind of a case study on my own business. I like sharing with you what we're learning, what I'm seeing out there with messaging, positioning, launching. We have tens of thousands of customers, thousands of students, hundreds of members inside the collective, my membership, and I'm creating copywriting templates all the time for the copy bar. I do it because figuring out how to make more money with your words, knowing the right thing to say at the right time and how to say it is unbelievably powerful. And if you don't feel like you're good, it's stuff like that that should not be the thing holding you back from making sales. That's what today's video is gonna be about. While we're talking about subscriptions, hit the like button if there's a subscription that you like, that you enjoy. Whether it is the Garden and Gun magazine that shows up at your house, anybody else? The box of diapers that shows up on your porch every month, yes, please. There's probably a subscription service out there, again, whether the project is digital delivery or physical that you like, right? It's 2024. We love our on-demand subscriptions. Y'all have liked more of these videos lately where I just kind of speak off the cuff. So here we go. Earlier this year, I talked to you about kind of how I got back after having my third kid and had this unhinged moment of thinking like, do I like this? What am I doing? My business has just kind of grown without me being all that involved lately because I've been having kids. And one thing I realized I missed so much, I was a journalism major way back in college. I love writing and getting paid to do it. Submit your story, get it on the deadline, get paid. Write, submit on the deadline, get paid. Like I love that. There's a quote randomly that's something like, I love the sound of deadlines whooshing by my head. Oh, it me. I kind of sometimes only do things if I have a deadline. So I like that quick turnaround and delivery model. I was missing that. I was missing feeling like a paid writer in my own business. Have a writing business, wasn't doing as much writing, something felt off. So one thing I knew I wanted to do is start some sort of paid newsletter where I was doing the things I enjoy, reporting, studying trends, analyzing, pulling words together and then I wanted to deliver that to a group of people and I wanted to get paid for it. So that's where the idea for me came from to have a paid newsletter. I'm gonna tell you more about what it actually looked like for me, but here's two reasons anybody should consider a paid newsletter. Number one, toothpaste. I did a training with my members inside the Copy Bar Collective recently and I was talking to them about a subscription or a membership model and why you may want to have one, pros, cons, all that kind of stuff. And one thing that it came down to for me is Think about your toothpaste. You have like a relationship with your toothpaste or really any product that you buy that you have either some sort of daily interaction with or weekly interaction with. So think about you and your brand. How many times during the week are people thinking about your brand, your business, when they're not looking at a social post from you or seeing an ad or getting an email? What are their other touch points in the week? Something like a subscription, even if it's just a newsletter, like I'm gonna argue for here, gives you that chance. It gives you that chance to show up with a piece of value that they can then take and use in their life or in their business. You're delivering them something that they can have a relationship with. And again, a membership model is a great way to do that. A subscription model is too. Let me stop here and have a little define our terms moment. The way I think about a subscription is that the vibes are a little more hands off. Think drop it off, deliver it on your doorstep and go. There's not a lot of involvement from you in the execution of it. A membership, on the other hand, vibes are more hands-on. They include more involvement either from you or from the customer. So subscription, think Netflix, Copy Bank Club, that's my subscription. My Full Focus Planner sends me every quarter a whole bunch of new papers that I can put into my planner. A membership is going to be more something like your Costco membership, your Thrive membership for your groceries. The Collective, the membership that I have. A Rent the Runway membership where you go through selecting and finding the right thing. So your subscription, this paid newsletter you're gonna have is gonna be consumable, useful, and timely. Those are three 
paramount aspects. And then here's the kicker. It doesn't count as a subscription if you can't scale it with the same workload or input. So that was something that was important for me. I want to be able to grow the subscription that I now started in my business without having to add more than that one hour a week I'm spending on it. Okay, monetization wise, why would it make sense for you to possibly have a paid newsletter? Well, first of all, they're paying you. People are paying you more like patrons, which feels really good as a creator. I will say that to create a lot of content for free, which we all love doing, but it does feel good to just get that paycheck for it sometimes more immediately. You can sponsor your paid newsletter with your own stuff. You can also have opportunities for ads in it. Here's some examples. You can have tiers, which is pretty cool. So you can have people that pay month to month, they get a certain thing. People that pay in full, they get a certain thing. They could also get a bonus. And another thing I really like, I reported on it last year, ConvertKit acquired Sparkloop. And Sparkloop are the creators of that cool thing that I know you've seen before, where you basically can share a newsletter and get awarded for it. So it's kind of like rewards points, but for a paid newsletter. This is what it looks like. You may have seen this if you're a nerd and subscribe to lots of newsletters. Before I move into my platform selection process, I wanna address the elephant in the room. Ashlyn, what in the world do I put into my paid newsletter? What sections do I know? I got you. If that's you, go to this video. I did this video last year and I talked through all of the different little ideas you could have for sections of your newsletter. In fact, that whole video would probably be really helpful for you. So. Don't let that stop you. There's a resource. Watch the episode if you're stuck on what even goes into a paid newsletter. I totally sold myself on the idea of a newsletter. Now what? Well, one thing I know I didn't want to do, I at one point had my membership. I had the subscription folded in the membership and I wanted to break it. I felt like I wanted to get really clear on the delivery of the subscription versus the membership. I'm kind of splitting hairs here, but just know, I had really fallen in love with this idea of the toothpaste style, like have the relationship concept, to have the daily or weekly relationship with your people by giving them something of value they can turn around and use. But where did I put that? So this then led me on my where does this go little journey. There's so many different platforms that you can look at as a creator, as a writer, when you're trying to figure out where to put your paid newsletter. Patreon, Beehive, Substack, there's so many out there. Y'all know I love ConvertKit. Well, one of the things that pulled me back home to ConvertKit was that they started paid newsletter stuff. But I wasn't convinced just yet because I loved it. I really had all of them up and I was going through them pro conning everything because here are the four big things I was looking for. Number one, minimal takeaway financially. Okay, a lot of people don't know this. Not to dog on Substack. They take a whopping 10%. Yeah. 10% of the cut, at least at time of recording, they do and they did when I was looking a few months ago. So that 10% of your subscription revenue, everything that you're bringing in, they take, and that's before credit card charges, which I know I've talked about before. You can pretty much understand that 3% of everything if you take credit cards, bye. Okay, so that's a chunk of change. And I wanted my subscription, as I'm sure you might want yours, to be relatively low ticket. Nine bucks, 15 bucks, $19 something low, right? Okay, so that's one thing I'm looking for. Number two, ease of sending. I didn't want to add in another tech tool. Y'all know me, I am all for keeping this like <laughs> as lean, low bloat tech stack as possible. And so I wanted a tool that I could have ease of sending. I could pop into ConvertKit already, pop that sucker out and be ready to go without having to worry about automations and then if things broke because the next thing that I wanted was this, unbelievable ease for the customer. I didn't wanna put any other pressure on my customer support team to have to go in and cancel people or renew people and all that kind of stuff. I wanted the tool to be able to do that within the tool innately. So one thing I loved, and I went with the tool I did, ConvertKit, was because I had that cancel anytime ability. I could say that in the future marketing of the product. I can see you can go in, cancel anytime, just enjoy for as long as you want. There's nothing about any kind of like crazy refund policy or having to get on the phone or email with somebody to cancel. So that was a big win when I realized ConvertKit did that. And this is important for me at two. I wanted people, customers, subscribers to be able to access the backlog, the library, the archives. So when you join, you can go back in and read all of the archives. The archives are locked unless you're a paid subscriber. Okay, I'm proing, I'm conning, and there's absolutely some cons to ConvertKit, but I ended up seeing that this is what I wanted to do. This was the tool that was best for me. So here is what the 
the offer I thought of is. It's called the Copy Bank Club. And every Monday at 6 a.m. you get one email template, you get one AI copywriting sort of prompt, and you get three hooks to make you go, huh. The hooks you can use for anything, subject lines, reels, covers, YouTube hooks, whatever. I've only been doing this for six weeks. I have not advertised this. I have not run a single ad to this. I've only mentioned it in a sprinkling of emails. I kind of wanted to see, this goes back to like my come to Jesus, what am I building moment in my business. I wanted to see, do I like this creative tool? Do I like building something like this? Does it feel good? Do I enjoy this? How long is it going to take me? Is it going to take me an hour a week? Like I think, or is it going to take more? I wanted to play with it first and I have played with it now for six weeks at time of recording this video and I love it. So yeah, not even advertising, just organically mentioning it and probably only mentioned it in maybe three or four newsletters to my whole list. I have 175 subscribers, I think, and they're paying $20 a month. So I'm up to about $2,144. And the best part, I enjoy it. I'm liking it so far. So I think I'm gonna go with it. I think I'm gonna start promoting it more, put a whole mini launch around it, market it. I have a goal where I wanna get that number up to, follow along and see if I can get there. My goal is to get it to about 300 subscribers as a line item in my, like the different streams of revenue in my business, which I'm pretty sure I can get to by end of year. And I know that's gonna include churn too, which by the way, churn should be about 10-ish percent or less on a membership per subscription. All right, so I've told you about why you may wanna create a paid newsletter. I told you about the criteria I used when choosing my tool, went with ConvertKit, loving it. So now I wanna flip the camera around and I wanna show you tutorial style. This is how, if you were interested in building a paid newsletter, this is what to do. You can use ConvertKit, use another tool. You'll probably have to go through these little steps. So let's do it. By the way, I mentioned ConvertKit did have some cons that I had to sacrifice on. You're gonna see this as I go through this. Good morning, in my PJs over here. Okay, true life behind the scenes. This I get my best work done early in the morning before anyone's up. Okay, so here you can see the product itself. So in ConvertKit, all you're gonna do to build a newsletter is you're gonna go into your account. You're gonna click under earn products and you'll click new product. And once you're in here, you can pick and select, like, do you want it just once, pay forever, you, you want paid subscription, so you'll pick this, set your price, figure out fulfillment, grab that domain name if you want, mine is copybank.club. So that's how you make the basics of the product. Let's go back in and I'll show you. So in here, you can build out your landing page. And remember, this is like kind of similar to Substack, so it's not like a full-on landing page checkout. Truthfully, I told you I was going to tell you things that frustrate me. I think I want to start sending cold traffic to this. So I think I'm going to figure out how to make like a mini, not a long form, but like a mid form sales page for this. So I can break out the tiers. I was going to show you that. So yearly, monthly, I also want to be able to show like yearly, you get a few extra bonus perks, what that would be. But this page literally took me maximum 30 minutes to make. So it was pretty easy. You could set like all the looks and everything. Um, yeah, and then it's ready to go. So I'm not gonna click reports and purchases because I don't want you to see other people's information, but um, customize your checkout, confirmation page, receipt email, all that kind of stuff, so good. Okay, so let me show you now what it looks like to actually go in and send a broadcast out. So now what I've done is I clicked send. I came over to broadcasts my drafts folder and I'm going to open this one because so I pretty much just keep a draft going. You can set templates inside ConvertKit. Well, this is probably something I kind of cheat at. I usually just duplicate the last email and I use that as a template. Um, so the subject line, I'm going to fill in what the AI prompt and the email template prompt. And then I just have pulled in images. Um, I've kept some easy links up at the top that I think might help if people want to pop in, put a request in, submit an idea, um, and then a quick link to the archives so people can access all the past templates, all the past AI prompts, no matter when they join, they get access to this. Um, a little letter and then like what today's things are. Um, and then I get into things. So these, are, I, you can just bring in images. You can write whatever you want to write, insert whatever content that you want for your audience. And yeah, that's it. So then when you go to send it, all you're going to do is go to move my face. I'm going to click continue. You're going to send an email 
And then I'm going to send it. So just everybody who is subscribed to that product. So it's like I said, told you, I'm just playing with this. I only have this many people and it is great. And I'm going to schedule the date that I want to send. And then I will go ahead and click publish to web. I have started to make you a little thumbnail. So in the archives, it's easy to find like, okay, here's the copy bait club. But it's not just the subject line, but they can go back and see kind of like a card that says what that prompt was. Um, and only display for paying subscribers. So to access any of my archives, like to read past newsletters I've sent out, because a lot of people swipe my newsletters, which I'm all for, um, I'm gonna click that. So only paid and subscribers can access all my archives. And that's how I do it. And it literally, to write that email that I just showed you takes me about an hour a week. Now I'm thinking about during the week, oh, I think I wanna write about this this week, that kind of thing. So I'm not counting that time. I'm talking like hands on deck, an hour, send it out. And then, yeah, like I said, it's just a nice, little cash injection every month to do something that I kind of wanted to do anyway. So yeah, you should try it. Okay, that's it. That's what I wanted to tell you about and report on here from In the Weeds, what I'm doing. If you want to feel again like you're getting paid to create, it just, this is a good one. This, this kind of concept I think will feel good in your bones. Also, if you're stuck on what should be free and what should be paid, I'll tell you this. One thing I'm pretty sure I'm going to start doing is locking a certain pieces of my regular newsletter. So I send out the dog ear every week. I have whole sections in there and I think I'm going to start gating some of them and saying like, this is only for copy bank club members. If you want to subscribe, hop here. There's going to be enough value in there that they're good enough, but for people that want more value or want actual templates to walk away with, then the Copy Bank Club is there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this case study style video. If it's the style you like, be sure you watch the next video I have teed up for you. I'm taking you through the big launch that I just had. It was our second best in my business's history. So if you hear out there people saying, well, no one's buying these days, I got receipts. Also, other things they are saying, I got receipts. So watch that video. I hope it encourages you to get out there, make an offer. If you have something of value that people need and you're excited to tell them about it, you should get out there and launch your thing. All right, at this point, I'm just jabbering. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.